What's going on Collider Games fans? I'm Caboose and today I'm going to be bringing you guys 10 useful tips that will help overall with your experience in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is going to be useful tips to help you improve in your experience with the game. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Tip number one, upgrade your camp. And although this may seem obvious, it's still worth mentioning for those who have maybe decided against this in favor of saving money. If it's money that you're after, there's already a quick and easy guide on how to make a ton of it on this channel. So you can head over to the Collider Games channel and you can see that we have a get rich quick guide for Red Dead Redemption 2. And then with your earnings, immediately head to camp and buy some upgrades, specifically for Dutch's living space, which will then allow you to upgrade your own living space and that unlocks fast travel. Now for tip number two, it involves the cinematic camera. For those of you who don't know, in Red Dead Redemption 2, if you're on your horse or if you're just walking around, you can activate a cinematic camera that closes in the aspect ratio and gives you a film-like look at the game by holding select on the Xbox controller or I believe the middle pad on the PlayStation controller. However, there's actually a lot of use that you can get out of this. If let's say you're in an area where you don't have fast travel available to you or you don't want to spend the money on a stagecoach or a train, an easy way to just sit back and relax and let the game get you to your destination is by setting a waypoint, getting on your horse, running a little bit by holding A or X if you're on the PlayStation, and then just let the cinematic camera do the work for you. After you activate the cinematic camera and you're doing your little trot in the horse for a little bit, the game will take over completely and follow the waypoint path and you don't have to press a button. This is extremely useful if maybe you need to use the bathroom or if you want to use your phone for a little bit or just take a bit of a break but still have the game be doing some work for you. This can help out big time so I would highly recommend using this but I still would use it at your own risk I wouldn't use this for extremely long distances just because you never know what you're going to run into within the open world of Red Dead Redemption 2 and you don't want to ever be put in a position where it kicks you out of the cinematic camera and puts you in the driver's seat because maybe there's some bounty hunters on you or maybe there's just a random encounter you have with one of the NPCs in the world that involves you having to take them out or something you just you never know what you're going to run into in Red Dead Redemption 2 and you don't want to ever be in a position where you just run to the bathroom and you get kicked out of cinematic camera and you just get killed because you're not at the controller so be careful with this but it is still pretty damn useful my third tip involves creating outfits when you're out exploring the open world of red dead 2 you'll never know where a mission might take you so always make sure that you've saved outfits that are suitable for both warmer and colder areas of the map you can access and swap between outfits while on your horse, and you can also create an outfit that you want to use maybe specifically for some of your unlawful activities. Sometimes just covering your face with your bandana won't be enough to hide your identity. Town folk can recognize you by the clothes you wear, and sometimes the specific weapons you use, and even the horse that you'll normally be using when you're riding around town. So, if you want to create an outfit that is specifically for your robbing and thieving, then you can absolutely do so to help completely conceal your identity, obviously so long as this outfit is accompanied by a mask that you'll be wearing as well. While it may seem like a bit much and just a lot to manage overall, it's just worth doing this because it's better and more fun than having to pay off a huge bounty on your head. Now for tip number four, you're going to notice in the open world of Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll cross paths with a lot of people. You'll often find that in your travels, there are a plethora of random encounters with NPCs in the open world. And although it may seem tedious, engage in these as often as you can, and of course, try to help the people involved. In some cases, you'll run into a person that you save through one of the random encounters at a local town, and they'll offer to buy you something within one of the shops. This could come really handy if the person is willing to buy you something from the gunsmith or maybe even from the general store where you can get a pretty expensive outfit for free. So use these random encounters to your advantage. Try to help the people involved. You'll never know when it comes back and karma gives you something good. All right, and for tip number five, use your lasso while hunting. Now, if you're like me, you'll find that hunting is the more difficult and time-consuming activity in Red Dead 2, but something I've come to find extremely helpful is the lasso. You can use a lasso on animals like deers or cows to hold them still, and after you've caught them with a lasso, walk up to them and you can kill them with your knife. 
This helps keep your pelts in good condition to sell to your local butcher. Now granted, this isn't the perfect way to get the best condition of pelts out of some of the animals that you might be hunting. However, if you're just not a great hunter like me, this is a decent, efficient way to just catch some animals and hunt them very easily without too much trouble. My next tip involves getting easy Deadeye XP. Deadeye is arguably the most fun, useful perk you have in your arsenal. However, it's not so easy to gain XP and increase your Deadeye meter. The easiest way to go about this is actually by doing chores around camp. Every time you need to head back to camp for whatever reason, head over and chop some logs or drop off some hay to feed the horses with. In no time, you'll notice your Deadeye meter increase exponentially. Now this next tip is going to help you out so much just overall with the feel of the game. If you feel that Red Dead Redemption 2's controls are a bit sluggish, you're not alone. However, there is a bit of a fix here. Head into your settings and then into controls and from there, turn your aim slash look dead zone all the way down. You can also fool around with the look sensitivity to your liking, but it's recommended to turn down aim slash look acceleration and crank up your aim and look sensitivity. Make sure to apply these settings for both third person and first person mode. And speaking of first person mode, if you're looking for that ultimate immersive experience within Red Dead 2 and you're playing it exclusively in first person, you might want to consider changing your controls to standard FPS. This will change your run or sprint button to the left thumbstick, making it feel like the controls for a traditional FPS game. And lastly, you can also turn on the toggle to run, which will allow you to only need to tap A or X if you're on the PlayStation once to start running and twice to sprint, rather than having to hold down the A slash X button to run and tap it to sprint. Tip number eight is just to have a little bit of fun in the game. As some of you may know, Red Dead Redemption 2 has got cheat codes. So if you want to have some unfiltered fun in the game, well, cheat codes are definitely the way to go. You can access cheats in the settings. And if you want to explore the open world and find some of these cheat codes for yourself, keep an eye out for certain sayings written on walls or in caves. It's often that these sayings are the input for certain cheat codes. However, some cheats won't be able to be input until after you've purchased a specific newspaper. Now, if you'd like a list on all the cheat codes in the game that have been discovered, check a link in the description box below that we put there. It has a list of all the cheat codes in the game that people have found, as well as the specific newspapers that you might need to use in order to input those cheats. Just know when you enter a cheat code, you cannot save your game, nor can you unlock achievements or trophies. The runner up on tips here is to take care of your horse. Again, I know this seems like an obvious one, but there is a lot that you gotta do here. You'll notice every so often when you're patting your horse or brushing it, that you earn its trust. If you find a horse or buy one that you intend on being your main horse, make sure you are consistently taking care of it. Pat it when you have the time. Comment when it's agitated mid-ride by clicking in the left thumbstick and groom it when you've been on the road for a while or use your horse to carry animals that you've hunted along with their pelt. After bonding with your horse long enough, you'll be able to unlock certain tricks that can be very helpful like the ability to make sharp turns or have your horse shuffle from side to side. The stronger your bond is with the horse, the farther away that it can be whistled for and come to you. So all of this stuff is super important. Don't just pat your horse every now and then. You got to groom it. You got to comment when it's agitated. There's a lot that you got to do here in order to form this bond and unlock certain abilities that can be extremely helpful when you're on the road in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, my final tip for Red Dead Redemption 2 is to try and spend as little money possible buying guns from the gunsmith. Although it could be helpful to get certain weapons from the gunsmith, playing through Red Dead Redemption 2's story will actually get you some of the better guns in the game for free. Even certain stranger quests, some of the enemies you kill will have some pretty good weapons that you can pick up and keep as your own. Now you won't have the ability to customize these weapons, but especially if you're tight on money, avoid buying guns from the gunsmith unless you have to or just have enough cash to blow. And with that said, that rounds out my top 10 tips, extremely useful tips for you guys in Red Dead Redemption 2. I hope this guide was helpful. And if you found it helpful, a positive rating on the video would be appreciated. And then, of course, you can subscribe to the Collider Games channel to get your fix on Red Dead Redemption 2 and all gaming content. With that said, I've been Caboose, and I'll see you guys later.